Jack. Brian. Uh, you can get paid to read obituaries. Did you know this? I, I, I know it from having um, done this bit in the past. Yes. Yeah. You, you read obituaries, Jack, and if you give that person a good send-off, uh, you'll get paid by the family or the funeral home. I don't know how it works. Yeah, I'm not sure where the money – but that's fantastic. I, I'm very excited about this. We could use the, the money in, the, in this household right now, so that this is a big deal yep. to us. So I talked to some folks, and they are, are going to have you read some obits. Okay. And uh, if you can give them the gravitas they deserve, we get paid. Great. What's this we part? Well, I mean, I, I like to think that I, I, um, I'm I, helping you. I, I'm connecting you with these people. Yeah, I know you like to think that. I just sent you. I sent you an obit. Okay. And you can you can read that thing and, and honor that person's life. Okay. Well, I'm very excited to do so. I've, I've never read this before, which seems like a mistake, mm -hmm. but... Um, uh, I've opened it and I'm ready to go. Please do. Okay. Mary Beth Lawrence passed peacefully into the grace of the Lord Tuesday afternoon after a long, full life of love, laughter, and sexy adventures. She was 98. Mary is survived by her six grandchildren, her sons Jesse and Mark, her daughters Kim and Louisa, and Hank, her husband of 47 years, who she loved dearly, often on video. Hank and Mary were the proprietors of the Granny's Fanny video franchise. Launched in 1987 in their garage, Granny's Fanny produced high-quality <laughs> hardcore videos featuring Mary and Hank, her beloved and well-endowed husband of 47 years, 8 inches. Over the course of three decades, Mary and Hank produced over 500 videos on VHS, Laserdisc, DVD, dual disc, and most recently for their very own website, grannysfanny.edu. <laughs> Mary and Hank were a familiar sight to fans of geriatric pornography, and undoubtedly many readers of this obituary have copies of their many, many films stashed in an attic or tucked deep in a drawer. Films like Lick My Liver Spots, Let's Do It After I Take My Medication, Did We Just Bang? Because My Short-Term Memory Is Kaput, Nana in Heat, Saggy and Wrinkly Volume 8, Hank Gets Cuckolded by an Italian Stallion, <laughs> Hank Gets Cuckolded by a Black Bull, <laughs> Hank Gets Cuckolded by a Latin Lover, Hank's All-Time Greatest Cuckoldings, <laughs> and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Splooge. <laughs> a memorial will be held Thursday evening in viewing room number four at Adult World Bookstore in Parkersville. In lieu of flowers, consideration of a contribution to a charity in her hot memory is suggested. That's a sad for her. It's sad for her fans as well, I would imagine. Yeah, well, she had a good run. I guess. I, well, it's good to I know Hank is still around. Yeah, he might be lonely. We're not getting paid for that one, though, you know. Yeah, I know. That's a tough one to read. Uh, it is. I just sent you a second chance. Second obit. All right. Maybe you can land this one. Well, I sure would like to try. I'm going to try very hard because it's. I would like to do this. It's a little embarrassing when I fail. All right. I'm, I'm ready. I've never read this before. Please count me down. All right. Three, two, one. Gravitas. Daniel Sunshine Reardon passed away Monday after a brief skirmish with cancer. He was 52. Daniel was born in Hamish County to the late Rupert Reardon and Ida Simmons Reardon. Mr. Reardon is also predeceased by his wife, Wilma Reardon, as well as his brothers, Kurt and Emmett Reardon, and sister, Claret Himmler. <laughs> Early in his life, Daniel earned the nickname Sunshine because of his eternal smile. He woke up in the morning with a smile on his face, and there it stayed for the entire day. That ear-to-ear -ear grin would always light up any room Daniel was in, and nothing could take that smile away from him. When his beloved wife Wilma was stricken with illness, Daniel was by her bedside 24-7, holding her hand and smiling until she passed. When his brother Kurt was trapped in a burning Chevy Nova with vanity plates, Daniel did his best to rescue him, frantically smashing the car windows and smiling pulling his brother's burning body out with a smile and holding him in his arms, smiling as Kurt expired. 
When younger brother Emmett was lost in the wilderness for a week, Daniel organized a search party. Even though Daniel was the one who made the gruesome discovery of his brother's faith, his infectious smile lit up the bear cave and warmed the hearts of his fellow rescuers as they retched and vomited. When his dear sister Clara was being ma mauled by a pit bull, Daniel beat it with a shovel as he smiled. And while Clara bled out on the kitchen floor, Daniel was there, crying and smiling at the tragedy that had befallen them. Daniel attended high school in Waynesville, where his smile made him many friends and never failed to lift the spirits of his classmates. Even as Mr. Uh, Karankas suffered a massive heart attack in front of his history class, Daniel's smile let his classmates know everything would be all right, mostly. After suffering terrible headaches for weeks, Daniel went to the hospital where it was discovered a meatball-sized brain tumor was pressing on his hypothalamus, causing his lifelong smile. <laughs> Doctors were able to remove the tumor, and with it, Daniel's infectious grin. Daniel passed away one week later with a big scowl on his face. A memorial service will be held Friday at Riley's Funeral Home, BYOB. <laughs> huh, weird. It's weird. The smile, you, you think somebody's happy and it's actually, they've got a meatball-sized tumor there. Meatball-sized tumor. I, I'll, I'll never look at uh, sunny dispositions again. You'd think you, they might be sick. You see somebody smiling, you'd be, are you okay? Man. Get that checked. Uh, but what a life of tragedy that family has led. Yeah. But he smiled right through it. That's the that's what, you know. But I guess people assumed he was smiling through it because he was just unstoppably happy. But it it just turns out he, and you pronounce that word magically, for a cold read hypothalamus. Thank you good, for a cold read. I, I came upon it. I was like, I think I can do this one. Yeah, Thanks. maybe you can do this one though because you you didn't get that. Well, but bit. for the hypothalamus read, do you think maybe they're going to be like, well, we'll give him like half of what we're going to give him? Yeah, you know, it's all about the gravitas. Okay. It's not the pronunciation. Fine. I sent you a third obit. Yeah, I just got it. In the hopes that we can land it. Okay. All right, I just got it. Please count <clears throat> me down. I've never read this before. Please count it down. Gravitas in three, two, one. Mary Ann Dunning departed the earth for her eternal celestial buffet on Thursday. She was 39. Mary Ann was born and raised in San Antonio and spent her entire life in her childhood home which she inherited upon the understandable death of her parents, Clifford and Daria Dunning. For the past two decades, Marianne remained at home, rendered immobile because of her size. But not being able to exit her house didn't mean Marianne retreated from society. In fact, Marianne was very active on Instagram and had over 300 followers with whom she interacted daily, sharing funny videos and recipes for quick meals under 10,000 calories. Mary Ann was also very active in the Healthy at Every Size movement, tirelessly advocating for size acceptance and working from a reclined position to fight fat phobia, fat hate, and fat racism. She was a vocal advocate for uh, caloric equity and the elimination of the food pyramid and measuring quantities, which could be seen as divisive and hurtful by some people. Mary Ann never married, but loved her cats Oslo, Bennigan, Whisper, Meep Meep, Omar, Moki, Mister, Fluffy, Sophie, Pepper, Rufus, Florence, Dorito, Princess Buttercup, and all the others. <laughs> Funeral arrangements are forthcoming, pending the lease of some equipment and the hiring of a contractor capable of <laughs> and the hiring of a contractor capable of removing a wall. Also, we need eight guys. In lieu of flowers, please send donations to the Healthy at Every Size movement. It didn't gravitas. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I'd say I made it about 85, 90% of the way. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I was going to get there. There are a few things that might have broken others, but I, I plowed through um, the cats and the... Uh, Play to ribs. A lot of cats. A lot, it's a lot of cats. It's a ton of cats. You know, it's, you know what, something funny that I noticed in that, Brian? What? Some of the cats in that um, shared the same names of some of your cats, past and present. Huh. Yeah, I mean, you know, cats have a lot. Of, there's only a limited number of names you can give cats. Yeah, but but Moki and uh, it seems sort of specific. Uh, anyway, just sort of interesting. Mochi. M Moshi. Mochi. Mochi, that's right. It's a, it's a dessert, Japanese dessert. Of course, that's that's what. Also my cat, yeah. <laughs> also my, my family's cat, yeah. 
Huh. It's weird how that works. That is really weird. Well, gosh, uh, I guess uh, another uh, episode ending in failure. Yeah. Also, Princess Buttercup was John Mayer's cat. <laughs> and they had two cats, him and his roommate, the Princess Buttercup and Cop Killer. Is that true? That is true. That's awesome. Wow. But his roommate got stuck with the cats when John got famous. Right. And then uh, AOC adopted Cop Killer. <laughs> Well, all review right, well, us. And all that. And all that. Review us. And again, here's the thing I want you to do. This is uh, too much entertainment to give away for free, but yet it happens anyway. What you can do, tell a couple of friends about this podcast. Tell them it's a funny podcast out there. Talk about what's in the news. No holds barred. Anything goes. We're just trying to make you laugh. Tell a friend. Are you through? No. No, and write a letter. Find uh, the local penny saver in your town. Um, you know, perhaps uh, stage a sit-in at your school. Uh, perhaps write a play about our podcast. Uh, uh, put it on at your local community theater. Um, uh, perhaps uh, you know one of those airplanes with a banner over it at the beach that flies. You know, hey, you know, drink at uh, you know Smitty's. Uh, you know, five cent wing night. Questionable material with Jack and Brian. Um, Talk to your local uh, elected leaders about the podcast. Let them know. Let them know that this is important stuff, that we can solve a lot of problems together. Pray on it. You're Let the Lord know. The Lord is very powerful. The Lord can, have, can force people to have dreams about our podcast. Have you prayed about our podcast so far? Have you? Have you? No. No. Okay. Well, I bet our listeners haven't either. Something to think about. Uh, think about it. Now I'm done. Questionable material with Jack and Brian. Subscribe on any podcast platform. Watch our clips on YouTube. Visit us at qmpodcast.com.